I just think that the technologies of equality and freedom will start to rebalance the world's order as long as we still focus on certain principles, which is, are the technologies being used for the betterment and the individual, or are these technologies being developed by the government to centralize and actually keep their populations poor, keep their population uh, socially divided? So like the culture wars that go, go on in the world, massive distraction. What does it do? It distracts people away from understanding a whole bunch about how money works, about how government works, because people just get fed up and they get apathetic. And that is a huge danger. Whereas, you know, there was a time where we actually, I think in most Western democracies, stood up to the call of freedom and said, you know what, we want to go fight for our country. We want to be proud of our country. We I have more that I agree with as you as a Canadian then, I mean, we were at the heart of this recently in Canada. We had the country entirely not torn apart because you need to remember the protests that occurred in Canada, the trucker protest were the most Canadian protests of all time. Not a single window broken. <laughs> like They were picking up trash after themselves. No protest is totally innocent. And there were people's lives in Ottawa who were very disrupted. But this wasn't like a violent protest with fires and uh, windows being broken. But it was a festival. It was dancing. Well, I mean, <laughs> so not everyone supported it, though. Not all. Not not all people supported it. I. So you know, I don't agree with certain aspects of the science position there, but I have relatives. I have family members right now who, due to real immune systems, cannot get the vaccine, and they have been barred from traveling, barred from getting on a plane, and barred from getting medical access in the United States critical medical access that they need that is not available in Canada and they are their life uh their their potential life is at risk because they can't get public transportation because they aren't vaccinated so i'm sorry when it took come to this stance i supported the rolling back of some of these restrictions not because i have a particular stance on vaccines or i'm anti vax or i just believe restricting people's freedom to that degree, and what was being done with lockdowns was actually causing more harm, and the science has actually bo borne this out in terms of people's health, people's ability to, to interact, the depression, you know, all the second-order consequences. And it wasn't buying Canada much because Canada has one of the highest vaccination rates in the world at 86, and it was a massive distraction to the fact that they had underinvested in their healthcare system, and their healthcare system was collapsing because of mismanagement and that was why they focused on taking away, and that's my belief, everyone's freedom. It wasn't because of a mass you know, problem with getting people the vaccine. It, it was simply because of underfunded healthcare systems. And so they had to be totally draconian at the expense of some people's real rights. And so when the truckers, after keeping the economy going for two years and literally being alone in their trucks, were told, hey, you're now not allowed to cross the border or you're going to have to wait four hours to cross the border. I could totally understand the response. And the fact that they did that peacefully and the fact that they exercised their civil rights without violating law, any laws, I support that. And if you want to arrest them for committing a crime, then pass a law over pu you know, public loitering in Ottawa. Don't call them terrorists and Nazis and seize their bank accounts. And so, you know, once again, an example of how financial, financial inclusion or financial censorship gets used to demonize a certain part of the population. And that's why, from a messaging point of view, I am such a big believer that we've got to find areas where we agree with people, where we can sit down across the table and say, you know what, we don't have to agree on everything. And five of six of your points are probably 10 of my points are things that we'll never agree on. But let's agree on the base principles of freedom that exist in a technology we built with love and use that as our common ground. And if you remove the ability to financially censor people, you will remove one element of demonizing people, which hopefully will bring people back towards, towards each other. Yeah. It's hard to argue against... like. Uh, I'm pro freedom and I'm pro smaller government, but within a defined 
set of rules that we can agree on that make it a work. Well, pro-good government, anti-ineffective government. Because, yeah. you know, you look at what's happened since World War II in the United States with the lack of funding in certain core things like infrastructure. And then you look at the speed at which China is building brand new cities, hospitals. Uh, it's hard to argue. You're like, okay, wow. Being autocratic and totalitarian where you can like literally say, okay, we're going to throw all these citizens out of their town. We're going to rebuild the town. And if we displace a bunch of people... But for the citizens in that town, they had their rights infringed. It wasn't so good for them. So the trick is, what should we be able to learn from these systems? What would it take for us to have good government where we could put up, for instance, China's building, I think, 240 nuclear power plants in the next 10 years. That's the 240? Plan. Yeah. Holy and they've got the cost down to, I, I forget the exact number I saw. I recently saw an interview but I think their cost per nuclear power plant is down into a couple hundred million. Um, and the, these are some of the safest uh, nuclear power plants. They're not the safest. The safest system in the world uh, that we've seen recently, I think, is the Bill Gates project um, called Terra. Well, I'll find you the reference. But it's this new form of nuclear reactor that fails totally safe. So, like, you could literally bomb it and it would never explode and the nuclear material is contained and there's no nuclear waste. Um, he has for almost 25 years tried to get a pilot plant built with that technology and almost got it through before what happened in uh, Japan. Fukushima. Fukushima. And the, I mean, more people have died from carbon pollution than have ever died from nuclear by like a, a, a factor of thousands, right? Yep. Um, and so society just isn't good at this, but we can't build a nuclear power plant. The regulatory costs, the uh, debate, the time it gets locked up, every time, by the time you get half a group supporting it, there's a new slate of politicians because, you know, you talk about 10 to 15 years of regulatory approval and still nothing happening. So people just stop investing in it. And what does that lead us? It leads us to being dependent on foreign oil, having to do deals with dictators, it leads us to, you know, not being able to talk about an agenda of actually free and abundant power. Um, and so it's just so short-sighted in so many ways. And we have to be able to look at ourselves and say, okay, how do we change that? How do we get the best parts of technology advancement that can be beneficial, advantageous for our society and build more freedom and more independence and that's not always just based off how much more stuff can we buy for cheap for, from some foreign government that's going to build it for less pennies on the dollar because we don't care about them. Takes us back to that first point of being focused on the right things. Yeah. Which is something that's come up a lot of times recently, Danny. Yeah, it has come up a lot. Comes up a lot, focus and energy and are you picking the right battles and... Uh, it's something we think a lot about, like, is this good for Bitcoin? Mm 